Good morning all. It's another lead flasher on a breadboard and uh, well this one doesn't use a 555. No because there's the 555. No this one uses uh, an op amp or actually two op amps. In fact at the moment three op amps. So yeah this is an op amp lead flasher but it's a bit weird. So let me explain what I was aiming for here. <laughs> And ultimately what I ended up with, um, this is the LM324 quad op amp, which I uh, unbagged in my latest post bag video. And I was going for a, a oscillator circuit, which is quite a conventional circuit, two op amps. How am I going to draw it? Let's draw them like this, where I've got one going one way and one going the other. So the first part would be negative here, positive here. And it's an integrator. Now we put a capacitor between the output and the inverting input to create an integrator. We also have a resistor on the input side here. So I'll draw that there. That's connected to the outputs of the second op amp. And then the other op amp is a comparator. So we'll put the positive there, negative here. And uh, we'll have another resistor going down here into the comparator. You can put a resistor across here, but it can be quite a high value. And that's the second circuit. Now, the unused inputs, this will be VCC divided by two, and here also VCC over two. And that's the LED flasher circuit. And you can put the LED where you want, actually. Uh, if you put it on the output of the comparator, it will flash. If you put it on the output of the uh, integrator, it will ramp up and down. It will fade in and out in brightness. I'll show you that in a moment. So on my breadboard, I don't know whether you can see this, but um, these two resistors, which take the output, the outputs are on the uh, corner pins of this chip. So it's quite easy to work with. Uh, the outputs are on the corners. The next one back is the negative if, or the inverting input. And then the inner pins, not including the middle ones, of course, because they're power. Uh, they are the non-inverting inputs, the positive inputs. So I've got 100k resistors uh, linking the output of one to the input of the other. So 100k and 100k there. Capacitor, pretty much anything, because that just sets the time interval. And the resistor in the comparator, well, you can experiment with that. I think actually to make it work as a comparator, this will have to be a greater value than the input resistor. I think. I can't remember. But this circuit is not what I've actually got on the breadboard. No! What I've got is I've actually got a capacitor here um, in the positive feedback of what is essentially a comparator. I suppose once you put the capacitor in it can't really be a comparator or maybe it's a comparator that's kind of made to run slowly. I don't know. And I've actually got a resistor here in my inverting op amp, but its value is really low. That's 1K at the moment. And in fact, I'm going to go even lower than that if I can find the resistor. Yeah, here it is. 100 ohms. Let's take out the 1K. Or oh, is that 10K? That's 10K actually. Let's put the 100 ohms in, see if it still works. And what that did was it just made it flash really slow. Now, 100 ohms up here, where that capacitor is drawn, um, with 100k on the input, gives this inverting stage a gain of 0.01. It actually divides the input voltage by a thousand. And yet it still works and it still flashes. It's truly bizarre. I suppose I should mark in here that, use this pen, that I've replaced that capacitor with a resistor. A really low value resistor. Anyway, let's take this circuit back to the original uh, integrator here and comparator here and we'll just have a little look at that first. So here we are back with the original integrator which has the capacitor in the negative feedback path and comparator and yes I have had to actually go and get a different resistor. I think I was using a different um, resistor for these two positions originally. So I've now got 100k uh, in the uh, input and 680k as my feedback resistor. Interestingly, if I take that up to 
infinity ohms it doesn't work it just sort of sits there so yes I do need a proper feedback resistor in the positive feedback of the comparator to make this work so that's the original circuit integrator comparator now interestingly the output you see this on the internet as a function generator and the output from the comparator is a square wave the output from the integrator is actually a ramp it's a triangle wave so if I take this LED and move it to there I think will work that's the output of the integrator you can see that fading in and out and that's because the output of the integrator is a ramp or triangle wave the output of the comparator is a square wave interesting so where I had the LED originally I've got an additional uh, buffer op amp just acting as a unity gain buffer so that I'm not loading the output I could draw that in actually so that would be at the moment it's sitting on the output of the integrator which is why we're seeing the triangle wave the ramp so we've got another op amp here uh, it's unity gain buffer so it's output back to negative input and positive input is connected to there and I've just got the LED on the uh, back end of that as I say just to prevent loading issues because I was having in some cases the uh, mark space ratio was going a little bit out because the LED was pulling hard down one way and not having any impact the other so then once I'd built the circuit and I thought well that all works I'm happy I thought what can I do to sort of move on from this and then I kind of just regressed into my five-year-old self and I thought well let's just take things out and randomly put other things in their place a bit like I took out the comparator feedback resistor and it didn't work and I tried different values and then I thought I know let's try something really totally wacky let's actually put a capacitor in there instead of a resistor will it work and it does that's a 104 so that's 100n that's going a bit fast let's try this one this is a 105 so that's one microfarad and it slows it down so now I've got a capacitor in my integrator in the negative feedback uh, in the uh, inverting amplifier but I've also got a capacitor in my non-inverting amplifier I've got a capacitor in both so I've just got two resistors two capacitors and it works and then I thought okay well let's have some big capacitors this is actually a 106 this one here the tall one that standing up is a 106 and let's make this thing go really slow and now you can see that it fades in and out really slowly so by having a capacitor in both of these op amps I managed to slow this thing down and then I was a bit bemused thinking well what actually is this so I started looking up what actually is an op amp with a capacitor in the positive feedback and there are a few reference to it, references to it but not much there are a few uh, references to audio amplifiers that where they put a capacitor in the positive feedback for whatever reason but nothing about oscillators or timers so that was intriguing um, and then I thought okay well now let's take the capacitor out of the integrator that's this one up here and make that a resistor so that this then just becomes um, an inverting buffer so let's take the capacitor out obviously oh it even works without, <laughs> without anything so actually what we've got here is an inverting uh, op amp with no component in the feedback in the negative feedback which effectively gives this an enormous gain 10,000 or something like that but let's put in a resistor what have I got oh I've got all sorts of things here lying about oh there's a 100k so we'll match the input resistor and we'll put in a feedback resistor where am I I'm in the inverting one here we'll put in a feedback resistor the same value as the input resistor there it is oh that slowed it down ever so slightly how far can we go with this now that that means that this has got a gain of one 100k going in 100k feedback resistor let's try 10k here which gives this stage a gain of 0.1 and that's actually doing something now I'm going to put the LED back in its um, original position which actually I don't think is this I think it's this buffer amplifier connected to the output of the comparator 
So we get a nice square wave to look at. So I'll put that there. Is that still oscillating? In fact, it's so slow now that I'm thinking of changing this 106. That's probably oscillating really fast. Uh, for the 105, which is one microfarad. Yeah, that's a bit more reasonable. Now let's start taking this 10k. So 10k here gives me a gain of 0.1. Let's go down to 1k and have a gain of 0.01. Where's my 1k resistor? There it is. So out comes the 10k. That goes fast. In goes the 1k. And even that works. So now my inverting amplifier has 100k input resistor and a 1k feedback resistor. It's got a gain of 0.01. That's crazy. Let's go even further, take out the 1K and put in 100 ohms. So now it's got a gain of 1,000th or 0 0.001. And it still works. So I've got a really bizarre configuration now. I've got an inverting amplifier with a gain of 0 0.001. And I've got a comparator, but that has a capacitor in its positive feedback loop. What is this? Well, it's a flashing LED that runs really quite slowly. So in fact, let's take out the 105 and go back to the 104. So it's only 100 nanofarads. Let's see if I've still got a flashing LED. And I have. I've got quite a respectable flashing LED. 100 nanofarads. Nanofarads in the positive feedback of my non-inverting op amp. And uh, 100 ohms in the negative feedback path of my inverting amplifier thus giving a gain of 0 0.001 flashing LED. Truly bizarre. And this doesn't only work because I've got this buffer amplifier preventing loading on the output, because if I take this LED out and actually strap it across positive, oh, I'll have to bend it a bit, and the output still works with the LED tied directly to, now which one is it? This is the non-inverting so the LED is tied to the output of this op amp. Still works, it's just that the buffer presents no effective load uh, if I use the buffer. So I will use the buffer like that. But yeah, intriguing and weird configuration of a flashing LED using op amps. So always remember that a lot of scientific discoveries are made quite by accident. So it probably is a good idea to try a few things that might have happened in the scenario of an accident because you never know what you might find. I mean, I don't think this is going to solve the world's energy supply crisis, but um, it's just a really interesting novel configuration. So I'm not going to say cheerio just yet. I'm going to say Merry Christmas because this is probably the last video I'm going to make before Christmas. Um, it might not be the last video I'll make before the new year, but then again, who knows, I might get wrapped up in the festivities. So I'll say Happy New Year to you all as well. See you in 2020. Clear vision. Cheerio. Uh, just an afterthought. Why on earth on these quad op amps do they put VCC on pin 4? Because it kind of means you have to have the chip upside down. Look, there's the pin 1 marker. Pin 4, VCC. Pin 11, ground. Weird. Why? Why didn't they do it the other way around? And then your chip could be the sort of conventional way around. Pin 4 ground, pin 11 VCC. It's just weird, isn't it?